Hi, I'm Chris Wilson of Wilson Wildlife Sculpture and Wood Carving. This is a video about what I'm very passionate about, and that's finding wood for wood, creating wood sculptures and wood carving. So if you find value in this video, please uh, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate all your views, your likes, your comments, and your continued support. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to show lots of examples in this video, uh, some finished work, and lots of pieces I found and I'm shaping. So I'll show you my collection of wood. And to me, this is really, really fun. It's very sustainable finding wood. And I'm very passionate about it because I don't cut any trees down for the making of my work. This is all very sustainable and uh, very, very rewarding. Nature and God just keep giving. And I'm very blessed and I hope to share my blessings with you. So thanks for your support. Let me show you some examples here. Like this piece of maple I just found. In fact, all these pieces of, of wood on the uh, my driveway here I just found by searching the banks uh, along a lake. Um, and the water was low. It's it's fall right now, so uh, it's a good time to look when water levels are are, are low. Um, you can look in beaches and lakes. You can look in woods, and mountains. You just um, make sure you, you get. Uh, um, clearance from the property owners or if it's a state park make sure uh, or any kind of park make sure you're allowed to take wood because often you're not depending where you are um, so I'm fortunate to be able to, um, to find the wood um, but this has been years of practice and experience of what to look for and so I hope to show you those techniques here so here's a piece of maple I can tell it's maple because I cut it. I use a Japanese uh, saw for flush cutting the wood, which I'll show you later. Um, that's he helpful to have in the field. Uh, this was just washed ashore, and I like the concave and the convex qualities. This would make a nice nest for a sculpture. Um, and I'll sand this up and, and see uh, you know, how... how how good the wood is, um, but I, I always try to look actually the wood, make sure it's not rotten and you know it's not infested by insects and bugs. If there's some ants in it, it's okay. Ants will eat out the soft parts, but um, if it's beyond, if it's spalted, that can be good. But spalted wood is decay and it, it could be fungus and uh, you know it could be just too soft and damp. So I, I try to get the wood that's hard. That's my first uh, tip. Um, and um, you know, I will show some other examples. Actually, um, I looked in a forest right by the lake, and I found these burnt pieces. A fire had gone through the forest, but um, this is a still a good piece of oak that was burned. It's very hard. This is what's left of an ancient tree. It's got really tight growth rings, and I'm anxious to see what that's going to look like when I um, start sanding it. Um, even the burnt qualities will add character to the wood. There's a little bit of soft areas back here. And what I do is I first wire brush the wood. I actually do it in the field as I find the pieces. And then I bag them. And I try to get all the dirt and insects and, and sand off of them. Uh, this has got more work to do. One common thing you can look for in the woods is pine heart. Boy, this piece is heavy. This is a pretty long piece. Pine heart is, or uh, heart of pine, is what's left of uh, old pine growth. And this works great for spirit faces. Um, it contains a lot of resin, which uh, catches on fire. Um, and uh, so, again, a fire had passed through this forest, but uh, it was a deciduous forest with mostly, um, um, uh, with mostly, you know, deciduous forest or hard, hardwoods, which replace um, coniferous forest. So this is, this is an old pine, but you can often find these laying in deciduous forest on right on the ground and you can pick them up and it makes for great carving. Just a little check there. It's going to have a lot of good character. Even the burnt area is going to add something to it. So let me show you a couple other examples of finished work. Um, this, these are some pieces that, uh, that I found. One another good place to look for is in rivers and in, in the water itself. You can um, find wood in the water. I go canoeing, and uh, this piece of black walnut I found. Like, this is called char whale. On one side it looks like a shark, the other side looks like a whale. 
Now I added fins and uh, other pieces of the black walnut to it. But it's got a lot of natural character. And that's the, the great thing about found wood. You can find such beautiful character and nature kind of tell nature sculpts it and it kind of tells you what to carve. You just have to read the wood and study it. Sometimes it takes many years. Um, and I also use wood for bases. This is a maple burl, which I carved for this lizard. And uh, it kind of it looks like a mouth, kind of looks like a creature itself, the piece of wood. And so it echoes the shape of the lizard. So I constantly look at interesting pieces of wood. The lines of the wood kind of look like uh, the lines of the lizard's tail. And, uh, and I added a, I'm going to add a dragonfly up here because I think it adds more interest here. And uh, yeah, so I will show you that later, a uh, finished piece. Let's take a look at some more wood. Again, these are pieces that I've just found. All this stash, I spent uh, many hours looking along a bank of a river and into the forest, which was hardwood. Um, a lot of it looks, some of our roots of oak trees, some of its pine heart. Here's a piece of big pine heart, but I got it from a, um, a friend's pro a private property uh, down in South Georgia. Um, and here's a piece of pine heart. That piece of pine heart is very weathered and gray, which I love. You can just leave that outside. It gets this nice silver, silver look. Um, if it doesn't, you can bleach the wood, and the wood will um, get a lot lighter. This piece um, is also very cool. I just found it's pine heart, but it uh, doesn't. It's not weathered on this side, so I may have to bleach it, or just leave it outside like I'm doing. You can see this side; it is more bleached. There's some soft areas, but it's got some good, really good character and uh, re really good shaped. I like hollows in my work like this. I'm not sure what kind of wood it is yet, um, but I will uh, carve and sand it. Um, first, I'll use that wire brush and get inside these grooves. And um, yeah, I found this along the, the shoreline, along a bank. Um, same with these, these roots. That looks like pine. More roots. I may have some piece of sassafras here because I can tell how it smells. Um, so I'm going to show you the rest of my wood collection just because this is so much, such, such fun to me. Um, here's my trailer of wood. Um, had this wood out here in a while, so it's all very weathered and gray. I've got a lot of pine heart here, big oak stump. Um, now, also, you can um, harvest your, uh, wood, you know, from um, trees companies. Um, so I've got some beautiful pieces of black cherry here that are curing. So I put wax on the ends of the black cherry, and uh, that helps to retain the moisture so it doesn't dry out too fast. Also, leave the bark on the wood. The bark will actually um, breathe and uh, let the wood dry without without it checking or that is cracking. So the wax helps. Those are you know, several pieces of nice black cherry. I just asked a tree company. I saw the wood and uh, they were about to take it to a landfill. And I said, hey, can I have those pieces? And uh, they said, sure. So they were happy to um, uh, just drop it off right in my driveway, actually right here. So that was, uh, that was a great find. But I also used this trailer for um, harvesting wood. Um, and uh, let's look at some more wood here. Gosh, I'm not going to show you my garage. I may have to take you through it, but uh, we got lots of wood. Um, lots of things are dried out. I save my best pieces, putting them inside my, um, or it's just so they don't get wet. Um, I do have pieces inside my house. Um, but uh, here's uh, some more wood, black walnut log, big log. It's dried for about 20 years. And same thing, I got this from um, actually, there used to be a farmer's bulletin, and people would advertise free things. And this was a tree that went, came down in a hurricane. Huge black walnut tree. And I got all kinds of stumps. And uh, I got this many years ago, picked it up on the trailer, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, I'm still waiting to, to carve it because it's a, a big piece. Over here, we've got uh, um, a nice piece of red cedar here. 
red cedar carves very well, um, great wood to carve, it smells well, so, although some people are allergic to it. Put some sawdust under your armpit and you can decide, you can see if you're going to break out and uh, you could be allergic to it. Uh, beautiful piece of pine heart here, nice piece of cherry, and uh, this was, I had to dig it out of the ground um, from, from the woods. And uh, I don't dig anything that's living, okay, I make sure everything's dead um, and find that things that way. So let's, let me take you through some other areas of my place here. Um, show you some of the garage here yeah I've got a lot of wood and these are some pieces uh, I kind of categorized them to um, different uh, different sizes okay I've got some bark as well here um, so I'm going to take you through the garage here one second because it's a little dark here yeah I got some pieces here some walking sticks a little too dark here I'll open the door walking sticks, cedar, back of the house. I got this nice big sucker here. It's a big burl. It's about five and a half feet tall. This is going to be a glorious carve. It's going to carve really dark. I've carved it before. Uh, it came from a swamp. A lot of work getting it out. It took me forever. I had to haul it out. Um, a lot of work. It's, it's easy if you have a boat or um, have friends that can uh, um, can help you because this stuff gives you a workout, especially if you find it in the mountains or um, you have to hike with it. And I've done that before, and it, it's a workout. Anything you carry, so I love burls. Beautiful cherry burl here. You can see I finished part of it. I got to put some more wax on that because it's checking. And uh, here's one with wax on it. Uh, it's still checking, but that happens sometimes. You need to just work with the character of the wood. Um, some nice oak burls and more pine heart. That's mainly what I find in the southeast. Uh, big piece here. So I put this stuff against the side of my place here. Um, and they keep relatively dry, but they do get wet back here. Um, and I work outside here. This is my back deck, my yard. And uh, here's some more pieces of wood. Nice piece of oak driftwood. This is a beautiful piece of red cedar, which I've had for it's 20 years and birds perch on it chipmunks and squirrels will climb on it and I love watching them and one day I'll turn it into a sculpture but right now it is nature sculpture and I just like um, listening to the sounds of nature back here and viewing the driftwood so um, I hope this video helps um, you know in finding wood uh, I, I enjoyed um, you know, helping you and uh, on this channel, so thanks very much for following me. I appreciate your support, and again, thanks for hitting that subscribe button.